thank you everybody for being here today. Welcome for what is really an exciting day for the Fighting Illini family. A day in which we will recognize an individual who arrived in Champaign Urbana in 1975, fell in love with the campus and the community, and in turn the campus and the community fell in love with him. An individual who believed in giving back to the community is as important as winning basketball games. An individual who, if he ran for mayor in this community, would win in a landslide. An individual whose spouse, Mary, is as beloved and as much a face this community as her husband. An individual who, in his 21 years of leading the Fighting Line and men's basketball program, became the winningest coach in school history with a style that was both disciplined and tough-minded, just like the coach. Matter of fact, he's the all-time winningest coach at two schools. And let us not forget, this individual also had some high-flying and high-scoring teams, like the 1989 Flying Illini, who still to this day are one of the most exciting basketball teams to watch in NCAA men's basketball history. His run, especially in the 1980s, established Illinois as a national power. An individual who built the foundations for the Fighting Line and Men's Basketball Program that included the birth of the Orange Crush, which we would all agree is the best men's basketball student support program in the country, and the Rebounders Booster Club. An individual who will be inducted into the National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame this November. An individual who, if you still don't know who I'm talking about, is known for his orange blazer and the Ludu. Though he told me, he told me uh, last week that the Ludu is now called the Nudu. <laughs> An individual, along with his spouse Mary, will now become lifetime members of the newly renovated State Farm Center Courtside Club, Club 53. An individual who I, like many others, has great affection and love for. And an individual whose name from this day forward will be prominently displayed on the court at the State Farm Center. That individual is Lou Henson. Just a lot of ways down here, but I think I can whip them. And every time I get up to speak, I always like to check things out. At New Mexico State, no, this is not working, is it? That's not on. That's not on. That's not on. Okay. At New Mexico State, I was going out to speak to the College of Engineering, and so I want to give a little something extra. I spent a lot. I spent a lot of time working on it, trying to do a decent job. I got out there. It was in the barracks, out in the desert, and there's no light. So I had to go back to my old speech. <laughs> so things like that will happen. Well, anyway, Mike, I want to thank you for this great introduction. Thank you also for arranging this special media conference and, and, and announcing this unbelievable honor. I never imagined that my name might someday appear on the floor of this renowned building. I'm humbly uh, impressed. I want to thank all of you for coming. Yeah. We appreciate your attendance. You know, I've gotten to know Mike Thomas pretty well over the last five years, and I know something about him. Uh, he doesn't pay his bills. He stayed in the house four months, and he, I never get a check. I feel, I feel like I figured one day, Mary, he's going to be, finally he's going to volunteer to pay for utility bills. He didn't do that. So maybe we need somebody like that for an athletic director. But anyway, I've known him, and we've gotten along really well. And, you know, this summer, I didn't know for until a couple of months ago that I had some health issues, and so uh, so Mike has been great about that. He's talked to me personally. He's called me. He's texted me. Even when they were a year, a week and a half ago, he texted me. And so that tells you a lot about Mike Thomas. He's a very caring guy. She wants me to talk louder. <laughs> okay, I'll try to talk louder. Anyway, uh, I'll, oh, Mike, uh, that is great. Uh, granted, 
gratitude for making this uh, honor so uh, possible and so precious. Some of you are unaware that I was athletic director two schools for 10 years. And, uh, and it's a tough job. I found that out. And so, uh, anytime you're athletic director, you'll have a few problems along the way. And I had, I had my share. And you just do it. It's a tough job. You know, whatever the profession you're in, you'll have problems. And so you become a problem solver. That's what an AD and a coach has to do. You have to be solving problems. But uh, I want to talk about uh, <clears throat> Mayor's been with me for 61 years. And uh, she was my head coach and partner for those years. And she's been. I think she got a bigger hand than I did. But anyway, and at New Mexico State, that's the way it is all the time. Because, uh, but she's been very instrumental in the, any success that I, I've had in my career. But I want you to know this. She's backed off up here because at New Mexico State for several years, she's been very active in everything. So she is a star down there, and she's had every prestigious award that you give out. But probably the most impressive, and the one she likes the most, is the honorary Dr. Law's degree that she received from New Mexico. It's quite an honor. But we appreciate the loving support that we have for the family, including our children, Lou Jr., Lori, Lee, and the grandchildren. When I came here in 1975, we had very little support. As a matter of fact, there wasn't many things going for us. Uh, we'd had bad teams had been to the NCAA in one time in 24 years, and we didn't have recruiting going on. The, big, the, the outstanding coaches in the state were against us because for two years in a row, they wanted the high school coach. And so, uh, when I was hired, they definitely they were against me. So, the one thing we did that I thought might have helped us, we got here, we knew we had to do a good job in the state of Illinois. A lot of players were in here. So, I had a great assistant staff uh, all through the years that I, I was here. And I said, well, here's what we're going to do. Back then, you could go seven days a week of recruiting. And I said, we're going to get into 400 high schools. We don't can't recruit good people, but we want to build up the relations. So we, we extended that and we went into over 500. And uh, we that year we signed two players that you know they weren't great players, didn't play that much, but at least we got started and signed a couple of freshmen. As you know, today those massive efforts paid off, and gradually we we reached the benefits of that. But it took everyone working together, and it starts with the Board of Regents, the faculty staff, the, the student body, uh, Alumni Association, uh, Orange Crush, uh, and all the others. There are a lot of them that had a lot to do with what we're doing today. As I said before, I had a true team effort to achieve success here. My coaches, many of them who played for me, worked long and hard hours to make it possible. They made several sacrifices for our team. By the way, Dorothy Bainwood, our administrative assistant, she's here today. We could, she kept us in line. Dorothy did a great job. And, and Rod Cardinal kept us healthy. Where's Rod? Raise your hand somewhere. Wherever you are, Rod. He's back there, Rod. I went, uh, many, many years ago, I was, uh, to give you a little bit of history, I was teaching coaching at Los Cruces High School, and the president of Harvey Sandwich called me. Let me get you back up a little bit. I taught math with his son at Los Cruces High School. So when that job opened up, his son said, why don't you call my dad and, and get that job? I said, they won't hire a high school coach. So I didn't do anything. So about two weeks ago, his dad, the president, called. Now, he got my attention when he called me. So I went down for the interview, and going down, I thought about a lot of things. And I thought maybe since the president called me that, uh, that I'd have a pretty good shot at the job, and uh, I pretty well had my mind made up on what I was going to do. Well, that morning, uh, 10, 12, 14 of them, the board interviewed me, and I thought it went pretty well. And they said, well, we're going to take a break, and we'll get back with you in a couple hours and do whatever you want to do. A couple hours, they came back and said, Coach, you're a coach. You have a job. I said, well, 
There's one stipulation that you've not thought about this a lot. All through my career, I've coached nothing but black players. You have no players here. You have no, there, no white uh, players at all. And so now he hadn't been in the university. And so, uh, so I told him, uh, I'll take the job if you'll enter it. Now, all these board members, they didn't expect that. They looked around, rolling their eyes, and they, they, I don't think they liked what they heard. And, and so uh, the chairman said, Coach, uh, uh, you'll have to get back to it. Well, they met with the, pres- with the president the next day. The president got the board together, and they agreed to do it. So that's how it happened to be at Hardin Simmons. I would have taken the job otherwise. I had another one waiting. So I could be pretty, I could be pretty demanding at that point. Uh, and so, uh, so anyway, everything is probably a mistake because, as a matter of fact, I might as well say now, you know, I haven't had a good job. I haven't had a good job. When I went to Los Angeles High School, football coaches were coaching the team. They were having fights, they couldn't do anything, and finally we started winning there. The Hardin Simmons job is one of the worst I ever took, probably the best state to take it, but it did work out. New Mexico State, they were 4 and 22. They had beat the rivals in 15 years. Uh, and old Jim Davidson, when I went there, we built one. And, uh, but uh, it, was, it was a bad job. <laughs> now I'm going to talk about the Illinois, it was in fact the best job in the country. <laughs> So anyway, I haven't had good jobs with it. It's not unusual to get bad jobs because usually you get because the coaches before have been fired, but uh, that's not always the case. Some of the time you get a good one. But as I look back, I can't believe how much good uh, and at times great talent that we had throughout the years. You don't win without talent. We had so many great players, and time after time, uh, when you get players going to win, you can't win without it. I don't care how good a coach you are. John Wood, I played against his team a few times, and a great coach, but he always had the great talent, and people, if they said, once you have the talent, they're going to win ball games. But there are a lot of things that helped us to win, and uh, we, we looked at our star players just like, well, the guy, the last man on the team got the same credit and the same attention that the best player on the team, and I think that's the way it has to be. If you can't have favorites, we've never had them. As a matter of fact, if I had two or three star players, I would go overboard this one with them and not worry about that last guy. You don't have to worry about them. Worry about your top players because if they don't have good attitudes, you've got a problem with your team. But uh, I really feel that, uh, that it, it, I think, it, it, again, I think it's a mistake taking this job because it's so far down. And I'll tell you this story. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, I'd never applied for a job after first in the first year. I never applied for a job, and the rest of the time they called me. Cecil Coleman, the AD here, called me one morning, and I knew him. He knew me because he'd seen the team play. We'd been at an AD meetings and all, and he said, uh, "We'd like you to come up for the interview." Well, I felt pretty good about it since I knew him. And would you believe that morning, Wade Walker at Oklahoma called me, and he wanted me to come in for an interview. I said, "Well." Wade, after go to Illinois, I'll come in. No, you leave here, you come in to visit with Elton Jigsaw, I want you to come here first. So I went in there on Tuesday, and they brought the board into Tulsa, and, and uh, so the board, he left me. The board left, and he said, well, we'd like to have you, here's what we'll pay you and all that. So I thanked him for that and went on. So I called Mary after the meeting. I said, now, we've been offered the Oklahoma job. It is a great job. Uh, the coach just left the pros. He's got all this talent. He's got a new facility. He's got all the money. And I'd be going home. Now, I'll tell you about Illinois. And it's in shambles. They haven't had a good ball club. They haven't had good recruiting. And I went on and on. But I, I'm going to call you back on the way to Illinois. And you tell me what you think. So I called her back. I had an idea. I, you know, anybody would pick Oklahoma. So, uh, so I said, what do you think? She said, Illinois. I said, what are you basing that on? What are you, what are you basing that on? She said, well, that's my home state. 